You're listening to the Rauha, daily guidance for seekers with Sheikh Faraz Rabbani. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina wa Nabiina Muhammad bil Qadr al Azim, wa ala Alihi wa Ashabihi wa Atbaihi ila Yomidin. Alhamdulillah, in our Rauha sessions, we're continuing to look at Imam Ghazali's beginning of guide, uh, Imam Ghazali's Ayyuhal Walad his counsels to a dear student of his, a close student of his, on the absolute necessity of acting on one's knowledge. Because the purpose of, of knowledge is guidance. And guidance requires knowledge, but knowledge is not sufficient to be guided. The beginning of guidance is knowledge that is acted upon. The fruition of guidance is knowledge that is acted upon sincerely, whereby one acquires the praiseworthy qualities that constitute the reality of religion. And one rids oneself of those qualities that, that go against the realities of religion, so that through this becoming guided, right? becoming a sincere servant of Allah, a pleasing servant of Allah, one can attain the, the degrees of the perfection of religion, which, which is ihsan, spiritual excellence. Right? So, but this is, you know, at one level religion is easy. Right? The Prophet said, inna hadha deena yusr, truly this religion is ease. But the Prophet also said, that inna hadha deena mateen, truly this religion is deep. fihi birifq. So enter into it gently, gradually. Well, it's deep. The purpose of this religion is an ta'bud Allah ka'anna katara, to worship Allah as though you behold Him. But it requires steps. To facilitate that journey, in the previous session we saw, Imam al Ghazali said, one needs to. One of the facilitative means is to find a true spiritual guide who is an inheritor of prophetic guidance, of the of purification of hearts, who himself has acquired the, who himself has acted on knowledge, acquired the praiseworthy qualities, rid themselves of blameworthy qualities through following a true spiritual guide themselves, thereby attaining the stations themselves of righteousness and, and closeness, and who has been authorized to teach others this science. Right? And if one finds such an accomplished, realized scholar, um, then one, one needs to respect them outwardly and inwardly. That's where we reached. So what is outward respect and what is inward respect? Imam al-Ghazali explains. Now, ihtiram, right, it's to give another the hurma, is to, ex to, to recognize and to give another the hurma, the res respect that they have, right? the, um, the inviolability that they have. Why? Because the ihtiram or respect is a subset of ta'zim, right? of considering something great. Right? Ta'zim, adhama yu'adhimu ta'ziman, is to consider something great. And what do we consider great? We consider great that which Allah has deemed to be great. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Hajj, وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Whoever venerates, whoever considers great the symbols of Allah, truly that is from reverence, mindfulness, taqwa in hearts. What has Allah considered great? We consider Allah Himself great and the symbols of this religion, which are those things that point towards 
Allah or that points towards the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we consider great the Qur'an, the Prophet sallallahu knowledge itself. Right? We consider great the people of knowledge. We consider great the believers. Why? Because they have, they are Allah's creation. Right? Anything that has an ascription to Allah, we respect them to the extent of that ascription. So there's a broad ta'zeem of everything in creation. Some of the people, um, Imam al-Darqawi says, even a stone, we have a certain level of ta'zeem, of ihtiram, of respect for the stone. This is Allah's creation. هذا خلق الله. But there's degrees of connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To the extent that these created things, to the extent that they express the, a connection with Allah that points to Allah, that call to Allah, that guide to Allah, we have greater degrees of respect for them. Out of respect for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is in no way, a, you know, respecting other than Allah, considering greater than Allah. This is... Yini, out of gratitude to Allah for the gift that He has manifest through these. So how do we express that with one's spiritual guide? And what, what's the significance of the spiritual guide? This person is guiding us to closeness to Allah in accordance with the guidance of the Messenger of Allah. He is the standard. Anyone whose guidance steps away from that guidance, we step away from following their guidance. Right? So this is a respectful but conditioned following. It's a respectful, deferential, but conditional following. Right? And that has to be clear. Right? That this is not just blindly following someone and acquiescing to, you know, granting too much authority to someone blindly. أَمَّا الْإِحْتِرَامُ الظَّاهِرُ فَهُوَ أَنْ لَا يُجَادِلَهُ From the outward respect is that one not dispute with them. Because the whole point is that you, you have to give them enough respect so that you have enough trust of their religious judgment that you'll follow them in drawing closer to Allah. Number two, وَلَا يَشْتَغِلَ بِالْإِحْتِجَاجِ مَعَهُ فِي كُلِّ مَسْأَلَةِ And one does not busy oneself with, with establishing proofs with them regarding every issue. So they say, right now you need to prioritize recitation of Qur'an. So you say, well, but I read according to Shaykh, to Mullah so-and-so, that the murid should be doing this. Okay, then if you know, then go ahead and do it. وَإِنْ عَلِمَ خَطَأَهُ Even if one knows their error. Their error meaning that this may not be the best thing to do. It's not khata. Khata is different from that this is not the most proper thing. The, for example, if they say, um, that the, the ideal, that, for example, the, the, you know, ideally you should do, Eight rakahs of, let's say, ideally, you should do twelve rakahs of salat al-duha. Now, let's say they're Hanafi. You say no, the, the optimal, let's say, is eight. Although it's different to what the optimal is. So, but this this is an, an error with respect to what is optimal. Right? Why? Because even though by the standard of knowledge, eight may be superior to twelve or whatever the case is, but this error in specifying what is superior. First, they may have a cause. Okay, they may be training you. They may this and that. And it's not, it's not an error that is a mukhalafa, that is in contradiction with the sunnah. Right? So they say that if you, or sometimes they may be testing your ability to follow. Right? They say, for example, in the Hanafi school, it is in itself superior after the fard. One does the basic dhikr like, and then one gets up and prays one sunnah. So according to the standard of fiqh, it may, you know, they say, no, uh, we want our students to sit 
and do their tasbihs in full. And many scholars do that. And you say, oh, this is wrong. Because the fatwa position of the Hanafi school is clear. Why are they doing this? For particular reasons. The considerations in that they want, they're trying to spiritually train the, the, the murid, that, that you've just come out of the prayer, you're focused, sustaining the focus through making tasbih there. Many of the scholars, not both in the Arab world and in, in the Indian one, a lot of ulama, you know, I asked a bunch of them, politely, privately, why they make tasbih, even though the optimal position in the Hanafi school is to get up and do the tasbih after the sunnah. So this is what's meant by, if, even if one knows their mistake, in terms of what is optimal. Maybe training, the, the, the cons considerations of suluk. This is not when they tell you something wrong. They say, pray four rakahs of maghrib. Such a person is not worthy of following anyways. Okay? And one does not place in their presence a sajada, a prayer carpet. Meaning, don't relax in front of them. You have to keep a certain distance of respect to be able to benefit from your teacher. Right? Um, إِلَّا وَقْتَ أَدَاءِ الصَّلَاةِ right? Because they, like they say, familiarity breeds contempt. And there's adab, which is why you know, we used to spend quite a bit of time with Sheikh Hassan al-Hindi in a teacher-student relationship. He was not my uh, spiritual guide for us, but once he commented something that was very insightful, he said, even if I treat you like my brother remember what 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 our relationship is and that even if they treat you like you're they, they, you know you're their younger brother or whatever they remain your teacher so you treat them accordingly okay? and you keep a res, you know a, a sufficient distance so that you can sustain your respect and deference for them so one doesn't just chill out in front of them, right? فَإِذَا فَرَغَ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ يَرْفَعُهَا So if one, even, except, you know, so one only puts out one's prayer carpet in front of them for the fard prayer. Otherwise, you, you pray privately. This means that, you know, if you're, because a lot of students would stay with their sheikh, right? So don't try to impress your sheikh, right? Also, they may be busy, right? so don't, do, do all your ibadah there. Wait, they're waiting for you to finish so they can move on. Okay? Um, when you're done with the obligatory prayer, you, you take your sajjadah. One does not make too much nafil prayer in their presence. This is in the context where they're living together, etc. Why? Because they, they have things to do. So once the prayer is done, you do, you, you do the sunnas or the core, you know, the, the emphasized sunnas, maybe even the recommended sunnas as the you know, situation entails. And then the other things you do privately, one out of sincerity. The goal of the spiritual path is not to impress the shaykh. It's not to please the shaykh, it's to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two, out of respect for their time. وَيَعْمَلُوا مَا يَأْمُرُهُ الشَّيْخِ And one does what the shaykh commands. من العمل بقدر وسعه وطاقته. So one does what the Sheikh commands of works. You know, if they tell you to adopt certain routine, spiritual routines, etc., right, or certain acts of service, to the extent of one's ability and capacity, طاقة, capacity. And the and the, the precedent for this is the, the Sunnah. The Prophet said, "There's some Sahaba he told." That never ask anyone for anything. Even if your stick falls while you're riding a camel, pick it up yourself. And the Sahaba then commented, who narrated the hadith, that we used to see this. You know, there's a, a, few, a number of companions. Even if they got on their camel and something fell, they used to get off their camel. And it's not easy to sit a camel and get off. And this is not a general rule. This was their particular practice. Right? And these are, in some continents, for example, some of them, these are their ashgal. These are things that the sheikh gives you to do to, to, keep, to, you know, to train you. Right? Um, and it's also a test of following. Right? A test of following. Because the spiritual path, there are, you know, they, they, they are high, lofty goals that one is aspiring towards. So 
they may test you on something small to see if you'll comply. Because if you can't do small things, how can they do big things? In a different context, this applies to knowledge as well. Sometimes, you know, a, you know, a teacher may give some small t uh, task. But if one doesn't do the small things, they'll never get to the big things. They'll never get to the big things. They may want to, they may have goals for you in terms of what progress they hope you can make. But if one d d isn't able to take step one, then how will you, you do the 10th step? Right? So that this is part of that. That's what, what a lot of the people refer to. The, 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 the capacity to follow. Right? They say it's, it's rare. Right? It is rare. وَمَّا احْتِرَامُ الْبَاطِنِ As for inward respect, and this is true respect. Uh, Sayyidi Muhammad al-Buzidi in his Adab al-Mardiyya, it's a brilliant, brilliant work, he said, simplifying, there, that true respect arises from two inward qualities, which are التَّعْظِيمُ mahabba. It's, it's ta'zim, considering great, right? It's deep, you know, it's veneration, deep respect, and love. And the outward expressions of, of that are sound and of consideration when rooted in respect and love. Otherwise, as Imam al-Ghazali tells us, it, it could be nifaq. Naam sidi. And they're just empty words, right? It's better not to say, Naam Sidi, and just say, I'm sorry, I, I disagree, and just walk away. You may have bad adab, but at least you're sincere. You're true. It's worse to have false adab and to be untrue, right? So, Amma Ihtiramu al Batin, as for inward respect, Fahua, Anna Kulla ma yasma'u. وَيَقْبَلُ مِنْهُ فِي الظَّاهِرِ لَا يُنْكِرُهُ فِي الْبَاطِنِ It is that everything they hear and accept from their spiritual guide outwardly, they do not negate it inwardly. So what is this all about? Right. لَا فِعْلًا وَلَا قَوْلًا Not in actions and not in words. And one of the keys to this, practically, is to have tafwil. You don't have to understand everything. Okay? You don't have to understand everything. You don't have to agree with everything. Right? You don't like the fact that your, you know, your, your spiritual guide says that, you know, suggests that you should be eating raisins in the morning. You don't have to, you know, your opinion is not really that relevant. The least is, you don't, have to have a, you don't have to make a judgment about it. You don't have to agree with it. It's better to just say, so why is it this way? Don't ask me, I just, I just seek here. Okay? Right? Um, so, unless, of, unless it's fundamentally against the Sharia, which in the first place, you shouldn't be following such a teacher anyways. Right? And in that, of course, we also have to realize that the Sharia is not just your school. Right? A sheikh may take an opinion from another school for particular aims of spiritual guidance. And it's also a test, will you listen? Right? So the sheikh may be Hanafi, but maybe suggest taking a Shafi position on something, and you listen because it, that, that's, in principle, valid to follow. And different shiuch have different criteria in things like this. Um, so, is that anything that one accepts from them outwardly, one should not deny inwardly, not in actions and not in words. Right? And the simple thing is, don't make unnecessary judgments. Right? The sheikh's wearing sandals without socks in winter, why is it your business? You don't have to have an opinion about anything. What do you think? A lot of people say, what do you think about the Sheikh's new turban? Don't think about like you didn't take a fashion consultant. You took a spiritual guide, someone who will help you turn to Allah, draw closer to Allah, acquire the virtues that the Prophet ﷺ embodied and called to. 
and to get rid of the vices that the Prophet was free of and warned us against. So that one may attain the degrees of closeness and good pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the stations of beholding Allah, having muraqabah. That, that's what the path is about. So what do you think about the Shaykh's new jubba? You don't think about the Shaykh's new jubba. That's why Abu Madian said, وَرَاقِبِ الشَّيْخَ فِي أَحْوَالِهِ Be vigilant of the Shaykh in their states. Eh? Not in these kinds of things. And these things. Oh, what do you think the Shaykh's new beard style? You don't think about the Shaykh's new beard style. Irrelevant. Right? Um, other things too. I disagree with the health plan suggested by the Shaykh. Is the spiritual path about health plans? No. If he said to do it, do it because... You've committed to listen to this person. There may be a secondary hikmah in it. Right? So that's the, that's the attitude. Because inward ihtiram is more important than outward ihtiram. Though both are needed. The outward is easier, but the inward is what's really sought. Right? Because if you outwardly accept it, na'am sidi, but inwardly you're den- condemning it, Lest you be characterized by hypocrisy. Right? Right? And what is hypocrisy? Uh, they, they define hypocrisy as being مُخَالَفَةُ الْبَاطِنْ لِلظَّاهِرِ right? It is for the inward to go against the outward. So outwardly one says, I accept, but inwardly one denies. And there's nifaqu imanin, the hypocrisy of faith, where you say I believe, and inwardly you don't. And there's the nifaqu amalin, and the nifaq of actions, where you said I accept to do this, but you don't. Or you do it in public, you don't do it in private. There are, and nifaq is a very dangerous trait. وَإِلَّمْ يَسْتَطِعْ يَتْرُكْ صُحْبَتَهُ But if you cannot follow somebody, that you can't accept what they're, te- what they're saying and doing. Then Imam Al-Ghazali says, then one leaves their company. إِلَىٰ أَنْ يُوَافِقَ بَاطِنُهُ بَاطِنُهُ ظَاهِرَهُ Until one's inward can accord to the outward. Now the other part is that we have to be practical too. Do you do every single thing that the Prophet ﷺ has told us to do? Do you reject what, everything that you don't do? No. Right? If, we, if that applies to the Prophet ﷺ, do we spend half the night in prayer or more than, than the, as the Prophet ﷺ did? No. But do you say, well, I'm not gonna, I don't believe in tahajjud. I don't know what, where this sunnah came from. No, you don't do that. Similarly, the Prophet ﷺ said, Everything I commanded you, uh, everything I prohibited you, leave completely. وَمَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِهِ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُمْ أَسْتَطَعْتُمْ Everything I, have, I call you to do, do of it as much as you're able. One applies that to the spiritual path too. That you do the best you can. And the things you can't do, you accept that I need to do it. I know I should do it. Ask Allah for facilitation. But don't, d- don't deny just because you're not able to do it. And that's part of humility. Yes, I know I should do it, but I'm falling short. That's better than say, ah, it's not. That, that's, that, and invariably, that inward, ref, that refusal, initially inward, then becomes outward, is nafs. And we call it a nafsul abiyya, right? The refusing self, the stubborn self. Right? And part of, and one of the wisdoms of having a spiritual guide is that you, you're forced to leave. Your, your inclination for another's inclination. And that's one of the wisdoms of our religion being a collective religion. That when, when we travel, we travel in a group. Right? And part of the wisdom of that is it teaches us to give up, of our, own, to give up our own whims. Right? That the neglected sunnah, that if one travels, even if two people are traveling, they should agree on one to be the emir, one to be the leader. And they should, they should consult but ultimately, they, they make the final decision and the other person defers. And the test for the leader is, number one, that they consult. Number two, that they consider the best interest of the other party as well. Unless, of course, there's manifest disinterest, 
then the person says, we got to reconsider this partnership. <laughs> this, you know, that's a separate case. Right? But this nafs and most people who stop following a spiritual path or guide, it's one cause. It, it is the stubborn self. The, you know, the stubborn, stubborn, ultimately arrogant self. And what leads to loss of respect breeds nifaq, breeds hypocrisy, and ultimately leads to one not following a true spiritual guide is bad company. Right? Which is why Imam al-Ghazali says, وَيَحْتَرِزُ عَنْ مُجَلَسَةِ صَاحِبِ السُّوءِ And one carefully avoids keeping the company of a bad companion. And mujalasa, mufa'ala, is to actively engage in something. Right? That to take as your regular companions. Bad company. This does not apply. You have family to visit, relatives to visit. They may not be religious, but one keeps. That is a purposeful company. This is the uh, discretionary company. لِيَقْضِيَ وِلَايَةَ الشَّيَاطِينَ وَالْ لِيُقْضِيَ وِلَايَةَ الشَّيَاطِينَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنْسِ مِنْ صَحْنِ قَلْبِهِ so, so that one cuts off يُقْضِي أَيُّبْعِد So that one distances the wilaya, the the authority of human and jinn shayateen from the from the courtyard of one's heart. Your heart is has is like an open courtyard, right? And inside there is right? so your heart is like a traditional home. It has it has doors. And it has a courtyard. And inside it has a private room. What's the private room? That is where you find the one you love, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But most of the time you're in the courtyard of, of your heart. Right? Even if you don't let these people in to your private, your private rooms, but who's in the courtyard will affect you, right? Because the, the loved one won't come out if there's bad company around, right? And فَيُسْفِي عَنْ لَوْثِ الشَّيْطَنَةِ So that one purifies the courtyard of one's heart from the loath. What is loath? Literally, the, the vileness but it means from the evil of what's shaitana of devilish tendencies right? and what's devilish tendencies waywardness right? from the filth of wayward waywardness and heedlessness right? which is to be wayward capricious heedless and disposed to sin wa kulli halin يَخْتَارُ الْفَقْرَ عَلَى الْغِنَى And in all states, one chooses poverty over wealth. Right? Poverty, of course, spiritual poverty is, always chooses that state and that conduct expressive of neediness to Allah over any state of, or conduct expressive of not being in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And consider the, the prophetic state in victory. He entered Medina, he entered Mecca victorious with his head bowed on his mount such that his forehead was almost touching the back of the animal. That is the humble. That is the choosing states of neediness. It's not choosing poverty that you choose to be poor rather than wealthy. Right? But rather one chooses neediness, inward neediness in whatever state one is in, whether it is in, because not a matter of the of the outward, but the inward. Okay. Say the Abu Hassan al Shazili used to dress better than anyone of his age. 
rich or poor, scholar or common person, right? he dressed better than all of them. And once this dervish came in tattered clothing to see, Abu he heard about this man, Abu Hassan al-Shadili, this great, great imam. And he saw him dressed in these fine clothes. And he's looking at it like, what kind of sheikh is this, dressed like this? So the sheikh intuited what the man was thinking. So he's, he's saying that the way you're dressed, said the way I'm dressed expresses to people that I have no need for you. That my only need is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The state in, I'm in expresses gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The state you're in, you know, being dirty and disheveled and tattered, is telling people, I'm in need of you, give to me. Your state is expressing neediness to creation. And lack of gratitude for what Allah has blessed you with. So that's what counts, is the inward state of neediness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Neediness and gratitude. And then, he continues by defining some key terms, which are very powerful. Um, and we'll just look at two of them just very briefly. He says, Then know that tasawwuf, that spirituality, has two qualities. Right? There's two essential qualities of the spiritual path. Al-istiqamatu wa sukoon anil khalq. Uprightness and being at rest, sukoon, from people. Faman istiqama wa ahsana khuluqahu bin nas wa amalahum bil hilm fa huwa sufi. So who is a person of true spirituality? Nasallallah dhalik. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever is upright, Istiqama, and you define what istiqama is, and who makes good their character with people and deals with them with hilm, with forbearance, such a person is a true Sufi, is a true person of the spiritual path. Why? Because that's the prophetic state. The spiritual path is striving to acquire the prophetic state of being pleasing and beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's uprightness in, of state and action and good character in one's conduct and dealings. And the key to that is hilm, right, is forbearance. And then he explains what is istiqama. He says, well, istiqamatu an yafdiya hadha nafsihi li nafsihi. Right? Um, uprightness is that one sacrifice one's selfish interest right uprightness is that one sacrifice one's self interest the interest of oneself for oneself right for, meaning for the good of oneself right being upright is that one sacrifice one's selfish interest right this what is a self the self, the nafs, is a quality within you that inclines towards its desires. So you sacrifice those, you, you sacrifice the interest of your lower self out of self-interest. What is your interest? Your interest is Allah's pleasure. Okay. So this is one way of describing it. Right? Um, Sayyid al-Sharif al-Jurjani described istiqama as al-wafa'u bil-uhudi kulliha is to be loyal, is to loyally fulfill all covenants. Wa mulazamatu sirat al-mustaqim and holding fast to the straight path, which is the upright path. Bi riayati had it tawassut by guarding the the 
the moderate balance in all matters. The praiseworthy moderate balance in all matters. Whether religious or worldly. Others said, istiqama, uprightness, is mururul abd fi tariq al ubudiyya. Istiqama is for the servant to walk on the path of slavehood, of ubudiyya. Bi irshad al shari wal aql. By the guidance of the sacred law and sound intellect. Right? Uprightness. Abu Ali al-Daqqaq said, Al-Istiqamatu, Lil-Istiqamati, Madarij Thalatha. Istiqama has three grades. Awaluha, At-Taqweem, Wa huwa Ta'deeb al-Nafs. Istiqama, seeking uprightness, right, has three stages. The first is making upright, Taqweem. Making upright, which is disciplining oneself, meaning restraining the wayward urges of one's lower self. So this is making upright, taqweem. The second stage is al-iqama, being upright. Wahua tahdibul qulub, which is to purify the heart, to ref- the, to refine the heart by acquiring the good char- traits of character. First is you have to restrain your wayward self. Leave sin. Leave the blameworthy. Leave heedlessness. Leave, right? Then, tahzeeb. Urdu is tahzeeb. Right? What's tahzeeb? Tahzeeb. Refining the heart. Acquiring good character. You know, good qualities. Getting rid of bad qualities. So, making upright... Then being upright, then the third level is al-istiqama, then uprightness. Right? And because istat'ala in Arabic has a sense of seeking and being realized and attaining. So it says iqama, so which is taqweem, making upright, then being upright, then uprightness, right? which is attaining uprightness, which is Taqribul asrar, attainment of subtle divine meanings. Right? Because if you're, one is to make yourself turn to Allah by restraining, turning away from Allah. Then you are active, uprightness then to be actively turned to Allah. And if you keep actively turn to, turning to Allah, then what happens? You attain the, the realizations of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet ﷺ described in the hadith of Ibn Abbas, Be mindful of Allah, He will be mindful of you. Take care of Allah, He will take care of you. Remain mindful of Allah, you'll find Him before you. These are the subtle meanings of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the other narration, in Tirmidhi, tajidhu amamak. Right? Remain, you know, remain guarding Allah, you'll find Him in front of you. That's attainment of closeness. Right, so these, this is, the, I'll share, I'll share this um, quote that I did with you, inshallah. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina wa Nabiina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Then uh, Imam Al Ghazali um, tells us about, so that's uprightness, that you, sac- that you sacrifice. The interests of your lower self for the sake of your true self-interest. And then he explains what good character is with people. And then he explains what is slavehood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he gives a number of other key concepts of spirituality. Right? But of true this and this is the spirituality that, that we're talking about. Spirituality is not singing songs and being fancy. Spirituality is sincerely striving to walk on the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ towards the states of becoming beloved to Allah, towards the states of closeness to Allah, towards beholding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
We ask Allah SWT for realization. Thank you for listening to the Rauha, daily guidance for seekers with Sheikh Faraz Rabbani. Help Seekers Hub give light to millions around the world by supporting us through monthly donations by going to seekershub.org slash donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and Canada.